Welcome to another broadcast of the program Ask the Pastor. This is Pastor Sophocles Christodoulou from the Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ. Today's question comes from England. What is a backslider? Are they still saved or have they lost their salvation? When he comes back to God like I did, did he regain his salvation? Did he ever lose it or did he just have a false conversion the first time and then the second time he had the real one? The word backslider is explained by the Greek dictionary of the ancient Greek as someone deserting somebody else. This word apostasia, backsliding, is translated, interpreted by the dictionary of Strong's as defection of the, from the faith, defection from the faith. It is translated in the King James Version as falling away and forsaking. So we see that a backslider is somebody who forsakes somebody who has been faithful to and he uh, departs and goes away. Surprisingly enough, the word uh, apostasia is derived from the word apostasion. The word apostasion is the word in Greek, in ancient Greek, that describes divorce. So a divorced person is a backslidden person from their own spouse. The etymology of the word backslider in the Greek language goes back also to the verb aphistemi, which exactly means standing far away from. And this is what happens with a backslider. A backslider is somebody who removes distances himself far away from the Lord. And I would like us to go to the Word of God right now and read from 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3. The Word of God there says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There is going to be a falling away, and this is a very good translation in English, because backsliding is falling away from and standing far away from. So we know that in order for Antichrist to show up, there has to be a great apostasy first. And this, sadly enough, will happen in the church too. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who said in Matthew 24 that in the last days we'll see this phenomenon of the love of many waxing cold. But praise the Lord for the love of the few that will wax even greater and much more hot. And we praise the Lord for it. The Lord Jesus also tells us in Revelation 3.15 that I wish that you were either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I will spew you, expel you out of my mouth. So the time comes when in the last days, true Christians will really be different from anybody else. They will be on fire for Jesus. They will neither be cold nor lukewarm, but on fire for Jesus. In order for somebody to stay with Jesus and stay away from backsliding, he really has to mean busyness with the Lord. I'm going to read uh, another verse from the book of Acts now to show you the exact meaning in the Greek language. I'm reading from the book of Acts chapter 21 and verse 21, which says, And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. And uh, in Greek, it says you are teaching the Jews to backslide from Moses. And this is the exact meaning of the word apostasy and backsliding. They were saying to Paul the Apostle that they are hearing about you, that you are distancing them, making them backslide from Moses, forsaking Moses. 
And this is the true meaning of backsliding, forsaking somebody uh, that you have been in association with, from somebody that you have been so faithful to him. And um, we are moving on to read from 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, which says, And the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, of course, speaks expressly that in the latter times, in the last days, some shall depart from the faith. And the Greek ancient text tells us that some will backslide from the faith. And again, the translation is very good in this place too. They depart from the faith. They move far away from. They stand away from. They have an attitude that is so much different and so much apart from the word of God. Some in the last days will depart from the faith, will literally backslide from the faith, giving heed in, or giving attention to uh, seducing spirits, one, and doctrines of devils, two. So, this is the situation of a backslider. A backslider is not hearing from the Holy Spirit. He is hearing from seducing spirits. And he is giving heed to the doctrines of devil. It is so important to walk circumspectly as the word of God says in Ephesians 5.15. Not as fools, but as wise. For we live in evil days in these last days. Now we're going to be starting from Hebrews chapter 3 verses 12 through 14. And see what the word of God has to say about keeping our hearts focused on the Lord and away from backsliding. Hebrews 3.12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So what does it take for someone to depart or backslide from the living God? A heart of of unbelief. We should be sensitive to the word of God, exercising our faith and absolute trust to the infallibility of the word of God. God is absolute. God is the living God. There is no other. His word is the truth from the beginning to the end. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. These are the absolutes of the Word of God, and we should look at it with absolute faith, not allowing our heart to depart from absolute faith and trust in the Word of God. Verse 13 says, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today. As the Bible says here and elsewhere, Today is the day of salvation. Never postpone things in the future as regards to the things of God. You should take immediate action. You should postpone other things, but give the things of God a priority. As we are told in Matthew 6.33, ask for the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and everything else that you need will be added to you. Lest any of you be heartened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And this is my point. Somebody is kept away from backsliding in safety, in faith in God, by keeping the... Uh, the trust and confidence he had in the beginning, steadfast to the end. We should remain steadfast to the end. Amen. This is a person who is not backsliding from God. As opposed to a person who backslides from God, he departs from the faith, he stands far away from, his attitude 
has nothing to do with biblical faith and everything he says is apart from the word, not from the word. A person who is safe is the one who starts with confidence and keeps this confidence steadfast to the end. You can do it by the power and the anointing of God. Are you willing to stay with the Lord till the end? He will give you the power and the anointing. The will is ours to say yes to him. The power is his. He is waiting for you to say, yes, Lord, I want to go to the end. Steadfast in my confidence, trust and faith in you and in your word. We're now moving on to the second part of the question, namely, if the backslider lost his salvation during this time of apostasy and backsliding from God. And my answer is a definite yes. A backslider loses his salvation. And uh, we can prove that from the word of God many times. I'm repeating Hebrews 3.14 to show you why. Hebrews 3.14, we just read before, for we are made partakers of Christ, ending up in salvation in heaven with Christ, and then eternally in the new earth with Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, if, if we hold, it's up to us. It's not up to God to hold it for us. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, not the confidence of God toward us, but the confidence we have toward God. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, we have to finish strong. We have to finish with a strong confidence in the God of our salvation. I'm also reading from Hebrews 3 and verse 6 now. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold, again, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. This is very powerful. Not only we are to hold steadfast in our confidence, confidence to the end, but we are to Fill this gap with much rejoicing in our salvation, rejoicing in the hope unto the end. So a person who is saved and not a backslider is a person that he is filled with great joy, the joy of his salvation. The third part of our question is asking about if a backslider loses his salvation, and then he comes back to the Lord. If uh, he really uh, indeed lost his salvation or was a false conversion the first time. And now that he's coming back to the Lord for the second time, he's getting really saved now at the second time. Well, really, a backslider is somebody who was with the Lord really born again and saved and lost his salvation. Otherwise, he cannot backslide, stand away from, drifting away from, falling away from, if he has never been with God. So we assume that a backslider is someone who was genuinely born again and a saved person. So thus speaking, a backslider, when he backslid, he turned his back to the Lord. And we are not talking about if he missed it, if he fell into a sin and repented. A backslider is someone who consciously uh, is uh, removing himself away from the Lord. So a real backslider, not a Christian who is fighting and struggling and repents, He's still a Christian. Amen. If he's repenting, he's a true Christian. All of us fall and all of us repent. But if they miss out on repentance, which is our maintenance for our salvation, repentance will take us to the end because 
what, what else repentance is but turning uh, again back to God. It's be united with God again. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a total change of mind. I decide to follow the word of God than my emotions, than my thinking, and whatever else might interfere into, into my life. So we consider a backslider a genuine believer who, after backsliding, he literally lost his salvation. Now, when he comes back, as uh, this precious brother from England refers to his personal own case, when he came back to the Lord, he wasn't uh, saved for the first time. He came back to the Lord, and he's a believer again. And I'll show you from Scripture how this can happen. So I know that there are false conversions everywhere in churches today, uh, but this doesn't have anything to do with someone backsliding. As I said, someone cannot backslide, backslide from God if he have, has never been born again. So a backslider, yes, he has lost his salvation. When he comes back, yes, he's saved again. And this can happen if we let the word of God speak to us. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 18. And I invite you to study the word together. Ezekiel 18, verses 21, 22, and 24. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions, that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. In other words, God requires of us uh, an active faith of the now. It has to be a faith of today, not of yesterday, not of years ago, but an active faith of today. Verse 24, but when the righteous, here we have a saved person, turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all that all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? In other words, if he lives like an infidel, like every sinner, shall he be saved or stay saved? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. And of course we know that our righteousness is that of Jesus Christ. But the righteousness of Jesus Christ is applied in our lives by our acceptance of Him as our Lord and His work and living in holiness according to the grace given to us, honoring Jesus as our Savior and Lord. All this man's righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass, that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. In other words, the situation you're in now shows if you're saved or not saved. If you live in righteousness, you are saved. If you live in sin, you are a backslider. You need to come back to the Lord. Uh, in 1 John chapter 3, it tells us this is how you can separate between a saved and an unsaved person. He who does righteousness is of the Lord. He who does iniquity is of the devil. It's very clear. It is very distinguishable. So we see that an unsaved person 
can be saved. A saved person can lose his salvation. And a backslider who has lost his salvation can genuinely come back to God as many times as this can happen. This is an explanation from the Word of God that shows us in the situation of your present faith, you shall be judged if you are a believer or not. Not of the situation of your faith, faith that took place years ago, a week ago, or in the past. It has to be a present faith. Let us now go to the uh, same book, the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 33. And I would like us to take a look at a few verses there from verse 11, please. Verse 11. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Clear directions to an unsaved person, to any sinner. Come to the Lord. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? He's talking to the house of Israel. All of the house of Israel was called a people of covenant. So, in a way we can say in today's standards that God is calling all those that are supposed to have a covenant with him and not, not living in righteousness, come back to a holy life. Come back to me and honor me. Those who honor the Lord, the Lord will honor them with life, abundant life, and above all, eternal life. Verse 12, Therefore thou, son of man, say unto the children of thy people, everyone, boys and girls, men and women, that's for everybody, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. That's why I said it is your present situation that shows if you're a believer or, or not. If you live in transgression, don't call yourself a believer. If you excuse that transgression, that sin, you're not a believer. You're a sinner. You need to come back to the Lord. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Things are so clear. No matter how much wickedness somebody is living in, no much how, uh, how much in apostasy and backsliding he can find himself in, it's never too late. The God we believe in is the God of the now. Uh, your faith has to be the faith of today, a present active faith to the living God. So no matter how much backsliding you're in, Come back to Jesus. The day, the time, the point of time you come back, you are saved. It is as simple as that. If you insist in sin, an unrepentful style of sin, then you shall die in your wickedness and go to hell. But God does not want that. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. Come to the Lord. The point, don't make it complicated. The point is that you live in sin, in backsliding. Don't just analyze situations. Immediately repent. As soon as you repent, you are saved. Don't worry about the past. If it was a false conversion, a real conversion. Uh, what matters is what kind of life you're doing now. In Jesus' name, I urge you. From within my heart, with the compassion of Jesus Christ, come back to Jesus now. Now faith is, Hebrews 11.1. 1. If we walk in the light, 1 John 1.7, as he is in the light and have fellowship with one another, come to church. Let us join together. If you don't have a church, join us in the apostolic church of Jesus Christ through international membership. You can find all this information on our website. 
But come to Jesus and come now. Let us rejoice with you that you made a decision that now I'm going to turn to the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. If we walk in the light, as he's in the light, and have fellowship with one another, then he washes, the blood of Jesus Christ washes our sins away. Verse 13, When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, you cannot trust in your righteousness that you have been righteous and now you're going into iniquity and say, once saved, always saved. It doesn't matter what I say, what I do, how I dress, how I behave. It does matter. Don't trust in your righteousness you had so far. Trust in the Lord that he dresses you with his righteousness. And it will show up in you living in holiness by the power of the Holy Spirit. If he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all, he, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Verse 14. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And if you turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If he, verse 15. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he hath robbed. Walk in the statutes of, of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Verse 16. None of his sins that he hath committed shall he be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right, and he shall surely live. He passed from death unto life, from iniquity unto righteousness. Please turn with me to now being made free from sin and become servants to God if you're really uh, coming out of sin if you really come out of backsliding it will show let us see what the word of God says you have your fruit unto holiness that's the proof that's the real faith that's the working faith if you walk in the holiness it's not by our actions or our works, this is the work of the Holy Spirit in you by the blood of Jesus. It's, it's his power, not yours, but it is the fruit. It will show if you're honest. It will show if you mean business with God. It will show that you want to be saved, stay saved to the end if you live in holiness. Not by your works, but by his power. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord Zechariah 4.6. So you have your fruit unto holiness and the end, everlasting life. The end of that lifestyle, the end of a lifestyle, a lifestyle of holiness is eternal life. That's the proof. And I end up this blessed anointed session. And believe me, the power of the Holy Spirit is really here. The anointing of the Lord is really here. Doesn't matter whenever you watch it, the power of God can hit you right in your heart and change you. We believe in the anointing of the Lord. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. It can happen to you. What I'm asking you is truly repent and live a life of repentance every day of your life. We believe that this is very powerful and the Lord will take it to as many people as they need it. We trust the Lord for this and we just do the work of the Lord. Hebrews Go there with me, please, to the book of Hebrews in chapter 12, verses 20, 28 and 29. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. You want to live for Christ, stay with Christ, have a life that, you know, it will not move. Live a salvation of God, the salvation of God, a kind of salvation that will not move away from your life. Neither will you move away from his salvation. This is the kind of living God is calling you into. The will is yours. The power is his. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom and salvation that cannot be moved. Let us have grace. This is the message of grace. This is true grace. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God accept acceptably with reverence 
and godly fear. This is the proof that you believe in the true grace. This is the proof that you have true grace in your life. That by His grace, you're enabled to live an, a life uh, that uh, you serve God acceptably. In the Greek text, it shows us you serve God in a pleasing way. God is pleased and He's rejoicing with the kind of life you live because it's His grace, His power, but you're willing to live in the life that God is giving you to be pleasing unto Him. And with reverence and godly fear, these are the elements of people who truly will make it to the end. We serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Can I see this in my life, in your life? We live in all the fear of the Lord and holiness unto Him by His power and grace. Verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. Before we close, I would like to warn you, don't play with God. Don't stay away from Him. He's done everything your life needs, everything that your heart needs, everything for you to be saved. This is one only thing remaining, one and only thing. You say yes to the Lord. Yes, I'm willing to serve you all the days of my life. Take my life and use it for your glory. Father, I thank you that at this time, people will be touched by your Holy Spirit. I thank you that backsliders will come back to faith and unsaved people will come for the first time in a genuine conversion. Their life will be revolutionized. Their life will be back to normal. It will be with God in restitution and restoration back with one relationship with the living God. And the power of God will set you free. And if you continue in my word, Jesus says in John 8, 31 and 32, you shall know the truth and the truth that you know, it will set you free. Father, I thank you for the anointing. Backsliders are coming back and saved. People are being saved in the name and by the blood of Jesus. And believers are being filled to the power of the Holy Spirit and with the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Jesus is coming soon. We love you. We pray for you. Write to us. Amen. Holy